Hi. In this series of videos, I will be talking about information technology and the airline industry. And the intent is to show over a series of videos how information technology and also other technology has changed the competitive landscape in an industry. And uh, I'm choosing the airline industry because I have some experience there, um, because um, it is one of the most competitive industries in the world, because information technology has been in incredibly important in the industry over time, and because um, it is an industry that was uh, where competition, uh, it used to be regulated and competition came comparatively early. So many of the important network industries, value network industries, come from a regulated past. Telecommunications, banks, insurance, all kinds of transportation like railroads frequently were regulated, so the competitive mechanisms weren't there. In the United States, airlines were regulated until 1980, then competition was completely let loose, and the rest of the world has followed. And that has meant that in the airline industry, we've seen the competitive mechanisms and strategy and technology has been allowed to play a part. There is another benefit to using the um, airline industry as an example as well. And that is that we all have experience uh, in airlines in the sense that in an airline, we are what's being sent. In a bank, uh, it is money being sent, and following money going back and forth can be difficult. Um, same thing with insurance. Um, you know, a lot of things are kind of hidden. Transportation, well, there are many companies. We kind of all understand airlines. Uh, we have, you know, very detailed operating experience from it by actually flying ourselves. Um, and, and so it's quite easy to talk about. So let's start a little bit, and I'll start by, by talking about the competitive nature of the airline industry. And basically, uh, it is um, one of the, the toughest industries in the world um, to compete in, if not the toughest. Richard Branson, um, famous um, um, businessman um, from, from Britain, um, who started a couple of airlines himself. He is known for saying that if you want to make a small fortune in airlines, you should start with a big one. And uh, there was there have been several studies, you see a picture of one of them here, um, that show that um, the airline industry ha is one of the industries, if not the industry, that has returned the least um, money to its owners. In fact, I have some experience with the airline industry. I've been studying it for almost 30 years. And um, to be quite honest, I really don't understand why anybody would invest in an airline. Um, there are airlines that make money, but over time, um, they all face competitive pressures that tend to really, really squeeze them. As a matter of fact, if you, if you do a sort of traditional porter analysis of the airline, and we, we sort of say the porter five forces. And in the middle, we often talk about rivalry, you know, how many competitors there are. Well, um, there, there's lots of rivalry. There are many airlines in most parts of the world. And unless you sort of have a route to yourself, you really are facing very, very high competition. Then if you look at the um, supplier power, um, and suppliers to the airlines are the people who build airplanes. It's the people who provide airports. It's the people who provide passengers, um, like the reservation systems and the online booking systems. And it is uh, employees who are providing labor, like pilots and, uh, and, uh, and flight crew, cabin crew. And, um, well... The picture is a little bit mixed, uh, but uh, if you look at, um, for instance, airports, if, a, if an airport it, is congested, there are lots of people who want to fly there, and most, some of the most central airports in the world are very congested. The competition is very hard to get and uh, to, to get in, so they can basically dictate their terms. Um, employees can have a lot of power. Um, before the COVID-19 crisis, there was a shortage of pilots in the world. So pilots are paid ex exceptionally well. 
Um, not so for cabin crew. Um, if you look at the people producing planes, it depends, of course, on supply and demand. Um, so they, Boeing, Airbus, Embraer, the others, they tend not to be that, um, that powerful in regards to the airlines. So overall, supplier power is sometimes high, sometimes not very high, but it's a mixed picture. If you look at customer power, um, and the customers are you and me, and um, the customers are exceptionally powerful in airlines. And the reason is that an airline trip is basically non-differentiable. Um, an airline seat is an airline seat. Yeah, you can have certain kinds of differentiation, better service and so on and so forth. But most people, when they are going to decide, they look at who is flying to where they want to go and then they choose the cheapest ticket. Unless, you know, of course, um, the, their company is paying for it. And um, so, and, and it's very, very simple to compare. You have online reservation systems, uh, booking systems over the internet, and the airlines are thoroughly squeezed by these big systems. Then there are two more strategic dimensions in the framework. Um, one of them is new entrants. And um, well, how hard is it to start a new airline? Well, the only thing you really need is money. Um, it's very easy to start a new airline um, because you, um, you can start by leasing the planes. You can even lease the planes with a crew. Um, that's called a wet lease. So if you want to start flying, you basically just spend some money, get a plane and start. Making money is another matter. But lots of people start airlines simply because they would like to own an airline or they observe that here's a city, here's another city, doesn't seem to be anybody flying there. And then, of course, the reason nobody's flying there is because not many people want to go from city one to city B, city two. Um, so, uh, but, you know, still lots of people just like the idea of having an, airli an airline. So it's easy to start, very hard to make money, but easy to start new airlines. And then uh, there is the threat of substitutes. And um, substitutes to airlines are other forms of transportation, like cars and trains. Um, but they are not really the main substitute. The main substitute is what we're doing now, video conferencing or teleconferencing, or not traveling, and instead using other forms of communication like email. If you think about it, as soon as there is an economic downturn, the first thing that gets hit is the travel budget. And the airlines feel you know, economic downturns very, very fast. As a matter of fact, when the economic uh, downturn, the mortgage uh, loan crisis happened in the United States in 2008, it took seven years until airline travel was up at the level it had been in 2008. So if you look at this, you know, all of this, the airline industry is pretty bad, you know, exceptionally competitive. And I'll add another problem. Once you have invested in an airline and you have all these planes and you have all these people and everything else, it's kind of hard to get out um, because you tend to assume a role where you're almost forced to keep flying. You may be important to some countries and so on and so forth. It's not like you have a factory in a town the factory is no longer profitable. You can turn it into office blocks. There's not much you can do with airplanes. You need to fly them. By the way, airplanes are exceptionally expensive. Um, we'll get back to some of this later. All right, so that was a little bit of an introduction into the airline industry, the competitive pressure that's there. Um, I'll also mention a few sort of important factors that we have in the airline industry um, that are words that I'll use. Um, for instance, there's something called a load factor. And the load factor is something that all airlines track. And that is the percentage of seats that are filled with paying passengers.
percentage of seats filled with paying passengers. Um, and um, as the information technology has become better and better and better and more sophisticated, so you can stuff more people into the airplane, we'll get back to that as well. Um, and as the competition has become harder, um, the, the sort of minimal load factor, how many percent on average of people in, the, um, in each plane that needs to be filled uh, with, you know, that needs to be paying passengers. Back in the 1980s, um, you know, a good load factor would be something like maybe 62%. You know, if you were 62%, you were really good. If you look at the minimum load factor now, some of the low-cost airlines, and I'll get back to what they are, are operating in the 85% to 90% range. And it is, you know, once you start filling up a network towards 100%, it becomes very, very hard to manage because you don't know where passengers will turn up. It's not like a straight line, you know, like a value chain, which you can fill to 100%. A network is, you know, gets congested as, you, as the average uh, use goes up. All right. With that, um, I'll, I'll stop this um, little um, sort of introduction um, to the airline industry. And I'll start by talking about uh, one company in particular, uh, American Airlines and how American Airlines created the first reservation system, why they did it, and the impact it had on their business. <laughs>